Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is award-winning actress, DJ, musician, and more, Crystal Lightning. Crystal has won numerous Indigenous music awards with her hip-hop group, Lightning Cloud. Crystal, who is from Enoch Cree Nation in Alberta, has also appeared in hit shows like Yellowstone and Trickster. In 2021, she won the Canadian Screen Award for Best Lead Actress in a Drama Series for her work on Trickster, a series based on the novels by Eden Robinson. Crystal, thanks so much for being with us this week. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm a longtime fan of both the, the music and your acting. Uh, the last two years, though, seem to have been wildly successful for you. As we mentioned, you won a Canadian Screen Award for Best Actress in a Drama Series for your role as Maggie Moody in Trickster. Uh, what has that meant for your career? Well, that basically catapulted my career, and I haven't stopped working since. It's been beautiful. Um, uh, that was, I feel like that was my breakout role as an actress. That's where I really got to flex. How did you come to be involved in Trickster? Uh, well, it's, it's actually a very funny, interesting story. Um, I was in L.A., living in L.A., and I was about five months pregnant, and I auditioned for this, you know, for this show called Trickster, and... I kind of knew that I would be not working, you know, in a few months and for uh, months after I had my child. Um, so I kind of, you know, forgot about it as you do when you audition. And then three months later, I'm on a tour with Lightning Cloud. And so we're touring the whole Southwest, you know, with my big belly. I'm still rocking shows on stage. <laughs> and nothing's going to stop this one. Um, and then our last show was at River Creek Casino where I'm from and that was going to be our last show before I kind of go back to LA you know pack up everything and come back home to Enoch to have my son and so that was the plan so on our last show at the casino my water breaks six weeks early and so I had my baby early and uh, <laughs> I had to stay in, in the NICU because my son was really small you know he's uh, preemie so I stayed in the NICU for 21 days just to make sure he was healthy and that he could you know um, you know, leave the hospital healthy and everything. And while I was in the hospital, nine days after I uh, give birth, I get a call from my agent saying, uh, remember that thing you auditioned for, Trickster? Well, the director is coming to Edmonton and wants to meet you. And I'm like, well, I'm in the hospital and I have no, I had like, you know, touring pregnant clothes, like big glitter jerseys that fit my belly and stuff. I had no clothes. Mm -hmm. So um, I left the hospital for a few, two hours. I went to, um, value village and got an outfit and met and met, went and met the director, uh, and took a little break from the hospital. And, um, yeah, that's where it started. You know, three chemistry reads later, uh, two months later, I ended up finding out that I got the part of Maggie Moody. Um, and I let them know, I said, you know, I have a newborn child and they were like, it's okay if you can swing it, you know? So I had a, I had a nanny come out with me and, and we just rocked it with my baby in tow. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. It was so, awesome. Yeah, that's a great story. Uh, your mom, Georgina, who's also well known in the industry, uh, played your mom on the show and was also nominated for a Canadian Screen Award. What was that like uh, getting to work with your mom and both of you, you know, being honored in such a way? It was an amazing experience, and because it's such a, um, um, an emotionally, you know, uh, challenging part, and there's a lot going on, you know, multidimensional characters. It was it was intense most of the time, you know, because our scenes are so heavy, and so, um, you know, it was tough, but it was also a beautiful experience. I mean, as an actor, working with your mother is incredible, and the stuff that we were dealing with. Um, within the story was, you know, very intense. So it was, it was awesome. You know, it really was. We got to connect in a different way. Uh, you and I are the same age, although uh, one of us is clearly aged a little better. Uh, but you had some <laughs> some roles in two pretty big franchises in the 1990s. You were in three of the Last Chance Detectives movies and in Three Ninjas Knuckle Up. Uh, that must have been really something to be getting so many roles at, at such a young age. <laughs> Three Ninjas, yes. Okay, so 
Three Ninjas was my very first movie. Um, when I was nine, that's when we left Edmonton. My mother moved um, my brothers and I and my grandmother to L.A. to pursue her dreams as, a, as an actress and study. And um, she, we got an agent right away as child actors. And that was my first audition for Three Ninjas and I ended up booking it. And that, that was amazing because I'm from Edmonton and like my first day on set, you know, I, I was on the Paramount lot. And I mean, you're just like, whoa, small town girl. Um and the first scene that I had to shoot was this, I had to cry. Like in the audition, I cried, I think out of nerves, I just cried and they were like very impressed with me, you know? So I ended up booking it. And then the first day on set, I'm supposed to do the same thing. And there's like a hundred extras and we're doing the protesting scene, you know? And so the director yells, um, well, first of all, hold on, let me back up a little bit. There's this thing called craft service. OK, mm -hmm. and as a nine year old girl, you see this table there all day filled with like every kind of snack you can imagine. Oreos, pop, soda, chips. I mean, chocolate bars, you name it. It's there all day. So I'm at the craft service just stuffing my mouth with Oreos and they all. All right, Crystal, you know, it's time for your scene. So I get to the set and I, I start my line and the director goes, cut, Crystal, your mouth's all black. We need some mouthwash over here. I just filled with Oreo teeth. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> get it together here. And he yells action. And I freeze, completely freeze. He yells action again. And I just completely forgot what I was supposed to say. You know, I think it's just in the room. You're in there with three people. And then when you get on set, when there's a hundred extra staring at you, it just kind of changes everything, right? So finally, take 10. I'm just, I can't cry. Director, cut! comes up to me, Crystal, why did I hire you? Uh, okay, let's roll. roll you know, yeah. <laughs> he made me cry, he yelled at me so loud in front of everybody. Now that I think about it, it was kind of mean, but hey, it worked. He came up to me later and apologized, but he got his take. <laughs> I watched and then it. I fell in love. I fell in love with the industry. I loved it. I was like, I want to do this. I, I want to be in movies. Little bit of Three Ninjas knuckle up uh, yesterday. Maybe not the most well-known Three Ninjas movie, but it, it does have like this whole indigenous environmental angle. It's 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 a good watch. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as we mentioned, you know your your mother's in the business, your brother's in the business. Um, what made you want to get involved in acting? I wanted to be a vessel for storytelling. I really love the the whole process from the writing process to it getting you know, pitched to the funding, to finding the actors. Like I know the behind the scenes because my mother, she's also a producer and a director. So I've seen the whole process happen and I love it. And I love, although I, I, I wouldn't want to be behind the scenes. I like being in front of the camera. I like being that, um, the vessel for the storyteller. I just love everything about it. I love that you get to play different characters and, you, the beautiful thing about acting too is you get to take all of your emotions, all of your life experiences, your traumas, your happinesses, your anger, and put and turn it into art. That's beautiful. It's another form of therapy, I think. <laughs> nice. Uh, you might have had a bit of a different path there, as you mentioned. You know, Georgina moved you down to Hollywood and stuff, and might have been easier to uh, to get your big break. But what do you tell others that are looking to get their break in, in Hollywood or in the film and television industry? Well, I tell people, um, first of all, to be patient. Um, there is a lot of competition out there. You really have to work on your craft every single day. Um, it is a um, very unforgiving business. Like you don't know why you don't get certain parts and you don't know um, the details of everything. So you kind of just have to, you know, work at it every day, do your best, forget the rest and just you know, keep on working at it and don't give up. I mean, it took me, it took, I was, my first movie was at nine. I mean, it took me over 25 years to get my breakout role. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it takes a long time. Um, or sometimes you'll, you'll get lucky and you'll get a break. You never know. Were there roles, I guess, uh, no doubt during that 25 year stretch that you really wanted that you didn't, you didn't book? Oh yes. There was this movie called Twilight. <laughs> that I really wanted, that I was so close to. Oh, that was tough. I mean, that was the part that I was ready to pack up my stuff, go back to the res, because that was it. I was so done with the competition. It's like, talk about like an emotional um, 
just them playing with your emotions. Like you go to this audition, right? You prepare, you go, you get a call back, you get another call back. Then you have a chemistry read with the other actors and then you don't hear anything. And it's just like, and you don't get any explanation as to why they just went the other way. And then, you know, a year later, you see all the billboards in Hollywood and, and it's just this big, huge thing. And I was just like, oh God, I don't think I'm good anymore. I don't think I have what it takes and I can't handle the rejection. And then I ended up booking, um, uh, I think it was American Pie. So I was like, okay, that, be, that put me back on the horse. But throughout my career, I felt like I always just got these little crumbs. Like I just, I never really got anything that I could sink my teeth into, that I could really, I always wanted to prove myself. I always wanted to prove that I could act. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't just like a pretty girl, you know what I mean? Or just in a period piece, like, you know, the, the token native. Um, and it wasn't until I started seeing a few years ago that there was actually... Um, legit content being put out there for us. Um, so the opportunities just were not there. They were absent. So um, I got these little sprinkles and then Trickster is what really uh, Well, if it's any really comfort to you, I've, I've seen all of the uh, Three Ninjas movies and none of the Twilight movies, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Crystal, uh, acting's <laughs> just one part. Uh, you're also a very well-known musician, and we're going to talk about that. We just have to step aside for a quick break, and then we'll continue the conversation here with Crystal Lightning. Stay with us. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is the multi-talented Crystal Lightning. And before the break, we were discussing your three decades of acting that culminated in a Best Lead Actress Award at the Canadian Screen Awards last year. Uh, but let's move to your music career now that, uh, you know, you started out with DJing. Uh, can you tell us a bit how that came to be? Yeah, you know, growing up in Hollywood and, and being this business that is like, you know, you never know when you're going to get your next part. I had to find another job. So I became your stereotypical actor and I got a bartending job and a waitressing job and I was cleaning houses and doing all kinds of stuff. And then one night when I was at work um, bartending, I saw that there was a DJ in the, you know, she was DJing the club. She was DJing the club. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, I want to do that. I mean, she was just, everyone was dancing and she was having a great time and I always loved, loved music. So um, I went up and introduced myself and um, she kind of took me under her wing and started teaching me everything she knew. I saved up my money for a year and bought turntables. I started practicing every day and then I started getting gigs and I started DJing all over Los Angeles. Then I started um, traveling and DJing, you know, New York, Miami, all over the States and Canada. And then one day when I was doing this, uh, uh, I was doing this, this, spread for this magazine called native threads magazine and they were they were interviewing me as a dj um that's where i met red cloud and red cloud was like hey i heard that you're a canadian and that you're a dj i need a dj for one of my tours that i'm doing um in the summer and i'm like okay and he's like and i can pay you three thousand dollars and i'm like okay yeah. i'm hired let's go because <laughs> i was you know really struggling financially so we went on tour and it was a blast i had so much fun so i was red cloud's dj and then uh one day when when we were you know because we were driving from like thunder bay to way up north and like those drives are pretty remote mm -hmm. so there was some song there was some music on and i started rapping in the back seat and he turns around and he goes yo crystal you sound really dope we should do a song together and i'm like mm, okay i mean i can act like I can do a character. He goes, yeah, I want you to do a hook in an English accent. Like, I want you to talk like this. I'm like, you got it. Let's go. So we got back to L.A. I, we, we, um, we recorded this hook for this song called Get Tribal. And people just really dug it. They, they loved our chemistry together. Um, so we did another song and we did another song and another one. And pretty soon we had a Lightning Cloud album. And that's how it happened. And then we submitted it to all the different um, music awards and we won a few, which was really awesome. So that was kind of a talent that I didn't know that I had, but it's also under the umbrella of entertainment. You know, like mm -hmm. when you're on stage and when you're rocking a crowd, you're still kind of acting, you're entertaining people, you know? So um, I love that too. I just love it all. 
And Lightning Cloud, which many of our viewers here would be familiar with, uh, very successful on both sides of the border, winning Indigenous Music Awards uh, here in Canada. But you also won the Battle of the Best in Los Angeles. Uh, this led to you performing alongside some of the biggest names in the business, Timberland, Nicki Minaj, Kendrick Lamar. Any of those uh, really stick out for you? Oh my gosh, all of them. I mean, Chris Brown, Nicki Minaj, Tyga, Kendrick Lamar, like we opened for these people, everyone that we listened to on the radio, you know, and there was like 3,000 rappers that entered this contest. And we just thought, ah, we're a couple kids from the res. I don't know if we'll, you know, we'll, we'll even get in there top, top 10. Um, and people just kept voting for us and people voted for us. And then we had to do a live show in front of um, the whole radio decks. And we ended up winning that contest. And because we won it, we got to open for all of them. Um, and we got a uh -huh. we got a uh, a track produced by Timberland, and we got to record it at Will Smith's Boom Boom Room uh, recording studio. So that was like uh, blew our minds, and we won ten thousand dollars, which was really awesome and helpful. <laughs> all super amazing. You know, with all that success, did you consider leaving the acting behind at any point? You know, at that time, I kind of just really was riding this wave. And I feel like that's what the universe was bringing me is, um, you know, uh, I needed to have some kind of creative outlet. And so music was that for me at that at that time in my life, you know, and, and throughout that time, I was still auditioning. But again, I, I wasn't landing, you know, um, the, the role that I wanted, you know, so music was just a awesome outlet for me. I, it was so much fun. We toured and. We, we wrote songs together and we were also really uh, very much in love. So um, that's a nice icing on the cake as well. And music's been coming back for you. You were involved uh, with the group Brown Fist Emoji, but you've also released some uh, solo music. Uh, why have you decided to, to go solo this time around? Um, I think, well, Red Cloud was working on some other things. He's also, he writes musicals and he writes, uh, he's an um, illustrator for our 1491 publishing. Um, he's put out six different coloring books, adult coloring books. So um, he said, you know what? Why don't you kind of do some solo stuff? You know, people are still kind of wanting some music from you and I'm kind of doing some other stuff, you know? Uh, so that's that's why I did that. I and mean, it's been a blast as well. And uh, always great music videos you got. I got to say that. Um, Thank it, you. Uh, you've also... You know, that's the beautiful thing about music videos is you can kind of create your own visual. Like, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't even have to really make sense to your, your actual video. You can kind of just be creative and and do what you want. Like, I, in my last video, I'm like, I want to swing from the ceiling and just kind of swing. And so that's what I did. <laughs> it was a blast. Yeah, they look like a lot of fun. Um, you know, we mentioned you're multi-talented. You're also an author of some books. You've done some baby workout and cooking videos. But uh, we're going to talk about oh, something yeah. that, that brings together your, your acting and your music, and that's Bear Grease. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We just have to step aside for one more quick break, and then we'll continue the conversation here with Crystal Lightning on Face to Face. Stick around. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is the multi-talented Crystal Lightning. And we've, Crystal, been speaking about your acting and your music career, and now the, the melding of the two, and that's Bear Grease. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what that is? Yes, Bear Grease is an Indigenous parody to the original musical Grease with John Travolta and Olivia, Olivia Newton-John. Um, we realized that we never had, Indigenous people never had that type of thing in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, or even today. Um, so we wanted to kind of recreate it and uh, make it really hilariously funny. And people are really, um, they're really enjoying it. My mom was absolutely obsessed with Greece, so whether I wanted to or not, I watched it hundreds of times, but I've <laughs> grown kind of fond of it. It was on TV the other day, and I watched a bit of it, but what are some of the, the key differences between Greece and Bear Greece? Well, with Bear Greece, we have tied in, um, you know, uh, drums, uh, native drums, you know, powwow singing, powwow dancing, regalia. Um, our ribbon skirt, our, our poodle skirts, our ribbon skirts, 
um, with the wardrobe, with with our whole vibe. Um, we have threw in some some native jokes in there. I mean, but you know, just a testament for this is we we opened this at the Fringe Theater in Edmonton, and our audience was predominantly white and. We got not, I mean, people were rolling on the floor laughing. So they were getting the humor, which was a beautiful thing. It's not just for Native audiences. Like, they get the humor. So um, it did so well. Our first our first show, we sold out. It was the first time that um, an Indigenous musical sold out the Fringe. So they gave us some more nights. We sold those out. So then we got another weekend at the Garneau Theatre. We sold that out. And now we're set to go out on tour in three weeks. We're going to tour the States. Um, we're starting in Calgary and then we go down to the States. We end up at Gathering of Nations in, um, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's a 12 person indigenous cast. It's written by Red Cloud and myself. And um, we're very proud of it. <laughs> it looks, uh, from what I've seen, really great. Uh, as you mentioned, there's a lot of American dates, but will you be uh, touring it in Canada? Yeah, so we actually start in Calgary. We're we're doing the uh, the Calgary Folk Fest. So we do three dates there, and those dates will be going live in just a few days. And so you have three chat if you're anywhere in Alberta, you want to drive out. It's well worth it. We'll be there for three nights. Lengthy drive. And then, yeah, that's it for for Alberta, and then we go down to the states after that. Lengthy drive for us here in Winnipeg, so hopefully it'll uh, swing a little <laughs> this west too at some point. Uh, was there yes. something uh, about Greece, uh, why you chose uh, that as you, the show you wanted to bring to the stage? Uh, we just always, Red Cloud and I loved the love story and the, the dance element that was incorporated in there. It was a little bit like rated PG-13, maybe rated R, and we, we never, that it, what, that wasn't available for Indigenous people back then. Like I said, there was no kind of uh, fun. Everything that Indigenous people was doing was based out of trauma or sadness or, you know, um, we wanted something fun. We wanted something where, that could make people laugh and entertain them visually as well through the dance and, and through the drama. Um, so there's some skits also woven through the musical as well, along with original songs and, um, you know, there's some uh, powwow singing in there as well. And it's just a, a very well-rounded piece. But, yeah, we, we just weren't represented in that way in, in you know, back then. Crystal, so we just created our own. We're, we're down to our last minute here. But aside from Bear Grease, uh, what can viewers uh, look forward to seeing you in? Um, well, this upcoming year, 2022, I just finished uh, filming a series called Three Pines. And that's coming out later in the fall. And also, um, I'm on an episode of Rutherford Falls, which will be coming out in the fall as well. And that's super funny. So can't wait for you guys to see that. And then I'm just working on music and Bear Grease currently. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing it at all. Uh, Rutherford Falls, Reservation Dogs. Seems like everybody's on those shows these days. Ooh. Man, because you know what's great? It's, it's funny. It's, it's humorous. People get to laugh again, and that's how we heal, through laughter, you know? And it's, it's about time, I think. Well, looking forward to it, Crystal. Uh, appreciate you joining us this week. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. That is all the time we have for this week. You can catch up on any episodes you may have missed by visiting our website, 8ptnnews.ca. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here next week.